Hello, this video is going to give an overview of Google Groups. I'd like to start by pointing out that there's a difference between Google Groups and Google Contact Groups. Google Groups are global and can be accessed by anyone inside your organization. A contact group is an email list that only you can access. A contact group, if I click on Mail and go to Contacts, then you can see here I've created some different uh, contact groups. Uh, and those would only show up for me in my email. If I were to start to type in Mr. CPE, up pops my contact group. So I can type in that contact group name and it would forward it to the people that are inside that group. Now that only applies for the contact groups that I've created. A Google group is a global group that anyone in the organization can contact. For example, if I type in teachers, up pops teachers OEA. So any teacher in the school district can send an email to teachers at oshkosh.k12.wi.us and that will automatically be sent to all of their OASD Gmail accounts. You can see here there's a little dividing line. These top accounts, teachers at oshkosh.k12, music K-5 teachers at oshkosh, those were different groups that were created by the school district itself. The groups down below here were groups that were created by people from within the school district. When you create a group, it asks you if you'd like to list it in the public directory, uh, which that's what this is. You can see here that the groups that are created by people and not by the school district itself have a dash OASD right before the oshkosh.k12 .wi.us. So you can use that as a tip to tell if a group is a district managed group or a group that's managed by a person. To create a Google group or to manage a Google group, I click on my apps launcher and then I go down to groups. Once I click on that, it will bring up a list of Google groups that I'm in and a list of Google groups uh, that I own. So if I click on My Groups, you'll see here, here's uh, a lot of different groups, uh, Oaklawn staff, you know, here's the all OASD employees, and some little groups that I've made. To create a group, you click on the red Create a Group button. You'll have to add a group name. And then what that does is that creates a group email address. And again, you can see it has the dash OASD. So people will be able to tell it was created by uh, a teacher or a member of the school district rather than the school district itself. This group email address is one of the key features of a Google group. Anyone that sends an email to that email address uh, will automatically have their message forwarded on to everyone in the group. There are some different settings you can toggle on and out, off to determine who can email the group. Uh, but typically anything that's sent to that email address goes to the entire group. Now when I scroll down I can give a little group description. Uh, typically that's not, if I'm using this as an email list, no one will ever really see that so that's not really needed. Uh, here it has the select a group type and I primarily use this function to create a group email list. There are some other functions for Google Groups as well such as a web forum, Q&A forum, a collaborative inbox if you'd like to manage uh, you know manage a, a workflow uh, we're just for the main purpose of today though going to talk about creating an email list here it gives some basic permission options so this is uh, where I referred to up here in terms of who could contact the group but view topics you can it gives you the categories and managers of the group all the members of the group all organization members, which that would be anyone in the Oshkosh Area School District, you can make it general public as well. Who can post to the group, this would allow who can send an email to that group. So right now, anyone in the Oshkosh Area School District, anyone that's a member of the group, uh, our manager or owner could send to it, but public is turned off. So if somebody with a home email address tried to send a message to this group, uh, it would not go through. So those features can be toggled on and off for security. I'm going to go into a group that I've already created. We'll cancel the group creation. We'll go to uh, 
gaff track classroom. So if I click on about, that takes me to some of the information about this group. Uh, here you can see there's the group email, gaff track classroom dash OASD. It has uh, some different statistics on how many messages were sent out. One of the big things I'll do though when I create a group is I'll need to manage the members. So over here I have manage and I have members. If I click manage, it brings up a list of all of the different members. If I need to remove a member, I could just click on them or click on multiple people, click on actions, and I could remove from the group. Uh, if there's someone I'm working with and I'd like to make them a uh, a manager of the group so that way they could do functions like this. I could change their role to a manager. If I need to invite people to the group, I can do that a few different ways. Uh, I could an enter an email address and invite someone and then they would have to go into their email and accept it. I could also do a direct add which adds them immediately to the group without basically without their permission. There are some restrictions on using this feature uh, just to basically prevent spamming of email where you can only add so many people at a time and then so many people per 24 hour period. I can also, <clears throat> so once I have everyone in my group, I click on members and again it, it shows everyone that's in the group and when they're in there, when they were joined. I'm going to go back and click on Manage, and then down here there's different settings that you can get at. If I click at Information, Directory, for example, here is List This Group in the Group Directory. So if you'd like to be able to have other people just type it into the To field of the email and have it show up, uh, that would be an option. If I click on Advanced, I have the option to delete this group if you ever need to do that. And if I click on General Information, again this is kind of like the first creation page. It allows me to see the classroom, the name, uh, the email address of the group. Permissions is commonly used as well. If I click on Basic Permissions or Posting Permissions, that allows me to again change who can post to the group, uh, who can join the group. If I'm making a group that involves uh, maybe parent email addresses, I would need to click this under posting permissions and not allow new users not in oshkosh.k12.wi.us. So basically a, you know, a parent that doesn't have a school district account, they would still be able to join the group. So once my group has been created, I've added in my members and it's saved. It might take a few hours or maybe perhaps a day to get synced into our servers, but then from that point, if you're in your email and you hit compose, I'll do gaff track, there's my groups, they just pop right up. <clears throat> I can click on them and it will forward an email to that group. So again, the advantage of using a Google group over a contact group is this Google group could be used by anyone in our organization. So possible implications would be maybe if I'm a co-taught, if I'm co-teaching a class uh, and I, my co-teacher and I, we want to have an email parent group, we could create a Google group. We could put both of us as managers of it. Uh, so that way we could both just type in our parent email group name and we could send the communication home to our parents. Whereas if we used a contact group, we would each need to have our own version of that email list so as parents or students come and go and parent emails come and go each of us would have to update that list on our own whereas if we had a Google group we could do that together. Documents, uh, Google Docs can also be shared uh, with Google Groups. Calendar invites can be sent out to Google Groups as well so if you regularly interact with a larger group of people it can be a much more convenient way to manage your workflow as opposed to adding each person individually. So that's an overview of Google Groups. Uh, if you have any questions about Google Groups, don't hesitate to let us know. Thanks and have a great day.